Technologica, a one-of-a-kind experience. And I'm going to make sure I have control of the screen here. And I do. So again, welcome to everyone who's joining us and taking time out of their busy schedules. And maybe some of you are in the south and southeast, and you have nothing but time because you're at home uh, due to the weather. We hope you're safe. Uh, my name is Don Racino. I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Product Development for Herf Jones Nystrom. Been with this organization uh, almost 15 years. And I have two wonderful guests joining me today. Uh, Mary Alice Curran, who is an assistant professor of the School of Education from the University of St. Joseph, which is in West Hartford, Connecticut. Hi, Mary Alice. Can you hear me? I hear you perfect. Hi, Don. How are you? Thanks for having us. Oh, thanks for joining us. Great to have you here. And we're also joined by one of Mary Alice's students, Marie DePinto, who is a future educator who's studying um, at the University of St. Joseph. Hi, Marie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for joining us. Um, you may notice that we have put our Twitter handles here uh, for everyone, more for Mary Alice and for Marie. Um, they are very active on Twitter, connecting with educators, not just in the United States, but around the world. Uh, they participate in some fantastic Twitter-based chats, such as SS Chat, which is a social studies chat, NT Chat, which is new teacher chat, um, digital citizen chat, and on and on it goes. So I encourage everyone in the audience who isn't already connecting with other educators on Twitter to do so. And these are two great folks to follow. And Ryan, if I could ask you just to clean up that image for one second for us. Great. Thank you. Um, in addition, you know, this isn't just going to be a presentation where we're talking at everyone. We really want you to participate. If you've been to our webinar events in the past, you know, that's how we like to do it. Um, so we really want to hear from you. On your meeting panel, the GoTo uh, meeting panel, the control panel, you'll notice there's a section that says chat. And we want you to use that chat section to be able to send any of your questions uh, directly to uh, the organizer. So you can start doing that now if you have questions about Stratologica or anything else that you, that you hear presented uh, by any one of us. And then as well, we're very connected, Herf Jones Nystrom. You can follow us on Twitter at HJ Nystrom. And we will be capturing as much of the conversation and things that we're sharing here today um, using the hashtag Stratologica. In addition to that, we'll be following this up with an email. We're recording this so that if you want to share it with colleagues, you can. We'll be talking about some other resources and white papers uh, that may help you in, in some of your efforts as educators, and we'll be sharing all that via email as well. Whoops, a little too fast that. Um, just to give you some background about who Herf Jones Nystrom is, uh, chances are if you're teaching social studies, um, you've been using our materials. Um, Herf Jones Nystrom is just about 110 years old publisher that started with basic maps and globes for the classroom, for kindergarten through university, but you also know us for our atlases, our hands-on social studies programs, and now very much for Stratologica. You know, we, we, um, we try to find the, the right mix of products that, that really do help teachers um, teach and are really helping the students learn. That is what we've always tried to pride ourselves on. And Stratologica represents sort of the next generation of, of what we're doing. And as much as we love maps and globes, and you know, we still like our pull-down wall maps and globes, um, you know, we have taken things to another level because technology allows us to do that. So much of what we'll be talking about today is how um, educators like Mary Alice and like Marie are utilizing a, a fantastic resource such as Stratologica to help aid discussion in the classroom, but even more, increase the engagement that they have with students. And even more than that, focus on what students can do, what they can learn, but then what they can create, what they can save, share, how they can collaborate, not just with the teacher, but with fellow students. So that's really what Stratologica is all about. Um, recently, in, this, in, in 2013, uh, because of the demand from our customers, uh, that we serve, we brought Stratologica to the iPad. And it has been um, met with overwhelming positive uh, praise from the education marketplace. So we really appreciate that. 
Um, we've recently been recognized for our efforts in that area. Um, we uh, recently won a mobile web award for best education mobile app of 2013 um, with our iPad app. And we just recently learned that we are finalists for the South by Southwest Interactive Award for Education Resource. So, you know, congratulations to the entire Herf Jones Nystrom team, our friends, uh, our developer friends at Isobar, and just everyone and our customers, because without you, we would not have uh, the success. So thanks so much. Um, going right into what we're really here to talk about, uh, how do we really learn best? There's a, a recent study um, or a survey of Americans asking them, how do you learn best? What do you prefer? And you know, we won't dwell on all this, but overwhelmingly still, more than half of Americans learn through hands-on methods. And you heard me say that you know, we produced hands-on products like maps and globes and other hands-on programs. And so those, you know, we have very deep roots there. Um, we really believe that students learn by doing. And that comes through collaborative efforts as well as working on their own. Stratologica does the same exact thing. It allows students to have a hands-on experience, whether that's at an interactive whiteboard or whether that is on the iPad. Additionally, um, a, a bit of research that we cite all the time, and maybe some of you are already familiar with this, uh, and you're familiar with Dr. Robert Marzano, um, his research concluded that just roughly 55% of academic vocabulary is rooted in social studies. And you know, I, I love to share that, that statistic with people when I talk to them, because it, it seems to floor them for a minute, they can't believe it, and then as they start to think about it a little, a little more, it makes a lot more sense. And to give you a little more background on that and how that breaks down, of, of that number, 32% comes from history about 11% from geography, and just over 7% from civics, and a little over 4% from economics. So with where we've seen education go, um, from no child left behind to common core state standards, you know, it's, it's been sort of a tough time for social studies. But I think the encouraging thing that we see as we look at common core state standards is in the English language arts uh, standards is the inclusion of history and social studies and recognizing that it is absolutely critical for students to get um, social studies education and knowledge and time. Um, uh, another wonderful uh, educator that we love to work with, um, Kristen Swanson, has talked about the need for student historians and for students really uh, grasping that concept and educators grasping that concept. And this, uh, it all just ties together perfectly. Uh, another piece of information that we'd love to share with you here, and we need to clean up our screen again for a second, um, is, is this graphic that sort of breaks down uh, what the average uh, child in the United States does with their time. And, you know, I have three kids from the ages of uh, five up to nine, and I can sort of relate to this. Um, I think we're stopping them from doing as much as what you see here, but let's, let's take a close look at this. How much time are they spending in a typical day watching television? It's, it's sort of jarring, really, to learn that they're spending roughly four and a half hours, four and a half hours of their time watching television. They're spending over two and a half hours um, listening to, to, to music. And then, you know, just a little over an hour a day playing video games. I think in my house, if my son had uh, his way, that would be the other way. The four hours would be video games, probably. Um, but but the, the sort of scary part is um, that students are spending less than four minutes a day uh, reading nonfiction text. And so this is something that Common Core, again, is, is focused on sort of changing. But aside from that, if we take that out of it, it, it just makes obviously very good sense um, to talk about the need for students to spend time reading nonfiction text. So it's a little bit of an alarming uh, graphic to take a look at, um, but students, again, they need to be focusing their time on uh, reading nonfiction text, interacting with um, hands-on products such as our hands-on programs, but also Stratologica. So the reason that we've brought Mary Alice and Marie to you today 
is because they have a very unique perspective. Mary Alice is a professor in the School of Education teaching future teachers. And, you know, Mary Alice, I, I, I don't want to steal your thunder. I'm just going to say that we met a couple of years ago at the ISTE conference. And um, that was sort of one of your first exposures to Stratologica. And I'd, I'd just really like to hand it over to you because you just have some wonderful things to share. And before I do that, also mention, um, again, Mary Alice's student, Marita Pinto, is going to show you exactly what she's been doing with Stratologica. And so you'll get a real sense of why this is important to them um, and the impact that it can have. So Mary, Mary Alice, I will turn the, this over to you for now. And why don't you share your story and what your experiences are? All right, perfect. Well, it, it's true. Two years ago at ISTE in San Diego, Ron Peck invited me to like a lunch and learn session on Stratologica. And um, uh, Ron Peck is a secondary high school teacher. Um, so, you know, I, I, what I teach at St. Joe's is an um, is a elementary um, methods course in both science and social studies. And so, although during that session I wasn't necessarily connecting to um, the content for high school, I just saw how valuable um, and hands-on and interactive. And at that moment in San Diego, I introduced myself to Don. And I said, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I need to bring Stratologica into, teacher into my teacher preparation program. Because um, over the years, I've been teaching at St. Joe's since 2005 with this methods course. And what I've noticed is when our teacher candidates um, go out for field experiences, they're not, it's not a guarantee that they're ever seeing social studies lessons at the elementary school level. And um, if they're not seeing that you know, there's a disconnect between theory and practice, if we're talking about, about it at, you know, in higher education in our teacher prep program and we're not seeing it, how are we going to make this relevant? So um, Don uh, told me, put me in touch with Tom Lagasse, and I want to give a big shout out to my favorite Stratologica um, representative here in mm -hmm. Connecticut. And Tom made it happen. Tom made magic happen. And, um, and so last year, I was able to implement for the first time um, Stratologica in this social studies methods class. And um, I just happened to be really fortunate that Marie DePinto happened to be enrolled in, this, in the course at this particular time because she has embraced Stratologica and like, made it her own and brought it to another level. And the part when I, when I pass it over to Marie, the, um, the really exciting is here in Connecticut, we have um, a relationship, a partnership with a local school system that has already bought into Stratologica, kindergarten through 12th grade. And um, for this elementary program, um, which to me is so exciting, is that our teacher candidates are going to be helped leading the way about how they are using Stratologica as they are preparing their lessons when they go into these field um, placements. And that, to me, um, really indicates and models that learning is a two-way street. And even though we've got you know, a future educator, a teacher candidate, coming to learn from a teacher, um, you know, teachers are going to be able to learn from our candidates. And then, honestly, this is what it comes down to. Um, if we can model as educators that, as an educator, I'm a learner first, and I'm open to learning, then we're doing the best possible, the best lesson we can we can pass on um, for our no matter what age you teach. And so I feel really privileged that I, you know, to be a part of today and to have Marie share how she's taken tried a lot and made it her own um, as a as a future educator. Mary Alice, one of the things that we hear educators tell us is that when they originally look at Stratologica and what their curriculum goals are um, for their, you know, for their educators and for their students, that they see it as, okay, this is social studies and this is a great new way for us to help students um, visualize history, uh, to, to work with various different layers of learning, to, to, to explore, you know, and all the key things that we need to, to research, to write, to collaborate. You know, this is, this is a great new way to do it. But then as they start using it, they start to talk to us about how there's all these cross-curricular benefits to it. And I'm just curious, before we pass it on to Marie, 
if you could shed some light on that from your perspective, um, not just as a professor, but then what your students are noticing and other educators are noticing. What, what can you speak to that uh, as a cross-curricular um, project? Uh Absolutely, and I also want to, you know, just kind of jump back and then tie in what you've just asked is that, um, you know, our elementary students come to school curious about how the world works. And if we are not providing ample opportunities for inquiry and, um, you know, I always say in class one, que one good question leads to another good question, but I want to focus on, in, in my teacher prep courses, you know, wonder, inquiry, awe, you know, and how we can, in the sense of curiosity, how we can tap into that. And social studies, as well as, and I teach that other methods course about science, and what Marie will show today is really uh, multidisciplinary, um, both with science and social studies and language arts. Um, it is, if we are able to show um, authentic connections through multiple disciplinary, then you get to see with your students these like light bulbs going off that they're able to see the connection in science and social studies and language arts and mathematics and um, the more connections that we can help our students make that way through uh, multidisciplinary curriculum, um, the more relevant the learning is. So um, did I get Tom? Did I? Uh, uh, Don? Did I? Uh, here I am thinking about my Tom Lagasse. Don, <laughs> did I get to answer that? <laughs> did I get to answer that question? You really did. Um, okay. You, no, I appreciate that perspective. Is there, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we uh, pass you know, it on over to Marie? It comes back down to time. What I will hear for elementary teachers is that they have so much pressure with so many different contents, and I mean, even now with the Common Core. And I have um, a seven-year-old myself, a first grader, and he'll come home and he is upset that we did more like inquiry in preschool than we ever than we do in social studies or in science. And he'll tell me, we read about it, but we don't do it. I want to do social studies. I want to do science. And um, I'm going to give another shout out to Sean Musselman and anybody on Twitter really should follow Mr. Musselman, uh, unbelievable science educator in Burlington, Massachusetts. But he has, um, you know, we brought him virtually into this methods classroom. And he'll talk about, that this needs to be a verb. You know, you need to do this. And Stratologica, so it's so, since it's so interactive, it's not passive learning. Um, you know, like my son described, we just read about nonfiction. I want to do science. I want to do social studies. And so what Marie's about to show is multidisciplinary, and it's something that is that students would walk away and feel completely engaged. Well, I think you're you're touching on something really important. Students are coming to school motivated to learn. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, often a book is put in front of them, especially when it comes to uh, the social studies, and that or can be really difficult. Yeah, or worksheets, which is painful. <laughs> you know, that's really the thing is, does it motivate students to learn? Does it develop, develop their skills? Um, that they're going to need to be successful. And, and again, over and over again, the feedback that we're getting uh, from educators as they like it. You know, you, you took the time to mention your child um, with my five, seven, and nine-year-old. Um, I'm fortunate that I get a chance to, to use them as my guinea pigs with Stratologica from time to time to see what they, you know, the various different ages and how they interact with it. And as much as they've liked the desktop application over the years and being able to use it, they've never had the opportunity to use it on an interactive whiteboard. They've only seen a video of that happening. But as we brought it to the iPad, of course I had, again, my little testers and, and uh, they started to try it out. And what I found as they used it was they completely forgot that they were learning anything. And they were starting to teach each other. So they went from the self-guided exploration and having fun doing that to the point where they were not quite fighting over it next, but they were motivated to teach each other about what and they were learning. You're, once you're able to teach somebody, gosh, you own it, you know? You, you know, you absolutely own that. And it's a powerful part of um, Mary Alice, you still there? I'm still here. Okay, go ahead. It's the par I'm sorry, we didn't hear you. That was a powerful what? Oh, it just that's when 
when our students are able to teach somebody else, then they own they own the content, they own the material. Um, I think it's the most powerful aspect um, of education, and um, I'm really I'm really excited to have Marie show how she's taken Stratologica and made it her own. Because if I were to say anything about Marie DePinto, is um, she should be a Stratologica guru. <laughs> well, thank I you. Want, I would yep. want her. I would want Marie DePinto to teach my son um, in elementary school. And if we can, you know, <laughs> plan it out uh, <laughs> with timing, um, I think, and <laughs> I would love that. Would be the ideal. Well, you two get on the timing, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that is a great seg that is a seg great segue to introducing Marie DePinto. Uh, Marie, thanks again so much for taking the time uh, to share with us exactly what you're doing. So what we're going to do is turn over control of the screen to you. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing as we turn things over to you. Okay, so my name is Marie Pinto, as they've said, and I'm a pre-service teacher from the University of St. Joseph. And I was introduced to Stratologica last year in Mary Alice's class, and I've never really liked technology. Um, it was never my forte, so when she said we were going to learn how to use it, I was really nervous. Um, but then I started using it, and it was pretty easy to get the hang of. Um, so I completely implement it into the units I develop, the lessons I plan. Um, because as a pre-service teacher, my two main goals are to try to bring, sorry, I'm kind of sick and you could hear it. No, you're fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, to bring learning into the 21st century and to give students ownership of their learning and the lessons. Because if you get student ownership, that's what really matters. Um, and as Mary Alice was saying, a lot of schools cut out social studies when they think of time. So I go into classrooms, some classrooms, every single week, and I've yet to see a social studies lesson. And I ask why, and they say, there's no time. But with Stratologica, it really is easy to incorporate science or math or English language arts into a presentation. So you could learn social studies still and cover the standards that your school needs to. Excellent. So can you guys see my screen now? We do. So what okay. um, what Marie is showing, just to save her voice for a second here, <laughs> is the, the, no, that's fine, the, the 3D mapping section of Stratologica. So, you know, you're looking at the Earth, you can interact with the Earth, and what's great about this is you notice at the bottom there's a toolbox, and that allows not just the teacher, but also the student, the ability to make their own markings, to add their own symbols, their own text labels. Um, their own push pins, as you can see, with photos, video, and text, and so forth. So with that, um, Marie, why don't you tell us what, what's been developed here? Okay, so I've made a bunch of Stratologica presentations, but the two I'm going to show today, one focuses mainly on social studies, and the other is social studies and science. Sorry. Okay. So this one focuses on the languages we speak, because almost every single grade has a standard that deals with interaction between humans, and language is just that. It's how we communicate with others. And so I only have six push pins in this one, but how you work is right now it's in display mode, but I could switch to edit, and you could change, you could mark things up, but you could do that in display too. So go back to display, and you'll start with Mandarin. So Mandarin has about 935 million native speakers and is spoken in many countries, including China, Taiwan, and Singapore. And with this, you can embed videos from YouTube, which is great, <coughs> images from Flickr, and other things. So you could weave that in so it makes it more engaging for students. So we'll, we could watch a quick clip just so you can see, and I can fast forward. I think you need to turn up your volume just a little bit. OK, so you get a taste. And then when you click on number two, it'll take you to the next one. So the next one's Spanish. The next one is Spanish. And with because of access to YouTube and Flickr, you can embed so many different videos. It could be of the culture, the language, and they could be at different levels. So the last one, the last video for Mandarin, could be more upper classes because, like, older kids. But this next one is more for elementary school, just learning Spanish. So. 
while we're looking at this, one of the questions that's being sent in, and I think Mary Alice, this is almost more for you. So go ahead and let that play, Marie. Oh, okay. But Mary Alice, um, you know, how in the past would you have, with something like this about the languages we speak, how would you have taught students to talk about something like that or teach something like that? And how is this different? Okay. Um, so we're talking about like the content of if we were talking about languages around the world? Right. And why, why is this different and why is this more engaging? Okay. Um, well, I even think Marie can answer it as well. But, um, you know, I think this is probably something that in the past, in a traditional classroom, this is something that we read about and, um, you know, we read about uh, different um, areas around the world, different languages that are spoken. Um, perhaps we look at culture um, around the world and, um, I mean, you could even um, have projects that students are doing, you know, pick different countries and, and there are things that they're going to have to report out on. But this makes it, the part about Stratologica that makes it so interactive and so engaging is that now this map is like three-dimensional. This is, um, it, it really helps you locate like time and place and location and um, really gives you um, a reference point to what our world looks like and where things are located. Um, I guess, I don't know, it brings in that 3D um, approach um, that you're not able to do just by reading a book or even going online and trying to find information about a certain country. And then right. as Marie will show you her presentation, it's going to zoom around to different locations. And that's the part that really allows the students to understand your relationship um, to these different um, areas of the world. Excellent. Go ahead, Marie. OK, I completely agree with that. Because one of the benefits of Stratologica is that it shows them where things are. And a lot of kids nowadays, you ask them, where's um, Poland? Where's Russia? They won't know. And this gives them, shows them where is in comparison to other places. So I'll just quickly go through the rest of them. So we don't have to listen to this one, but it just shows that you could pinpoint different locations. So then you could go to India quickly, um, Africa to learn Swahili, and to the Philippines to learn their language. So it's great. And as they mentioned earlier, there are a lot of tools. So you can mark things, but I don't want to keep that. So you can make shapes. You could do whatever you want. Excellent. Um, so then, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, and the, the, the great thing about this then is that the user, again, whether it's the teacher or the student, can save it, and they can share it by sending it through our secure system um, to other colleagues. So if they have certain lessons or activities that have worked very well, um, it's easy for them to do that. Uh, but also, they can send it to their students and ask them to add con to it, content to it and send it back. So, you know, excellent. That's great stuff. So then the next, the next one I'm going to show has both um, social studies and science. And as you can tell immediately, it's a different kind of map. Because with Stratologica, you could do political maps or physical maps. Excellent. Yes. Um, okay. one, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We just saw another question coming through that maybe you, I'll take a swing at it, Marie, and then um, maybe you can also add to it. Uh, it's asking how this is grade appropriate, and I think what, you know, even though we don't have a bunch of different layers to show you today, um, you may remember that I said early in the conversation that we have content for grade K all the way through university. And what we're really looking at here is middle school's kind of content. Um, if we were looking at something for grade K, uh, your grade one, what we'd be looking at is just continent colors and simple country boundaries and simple labels um, so that we're each, each time with all these different um, content layers that we supply, different map layers, um, we're building upon what is really you know, age or grade appropriate for the students as we go up. Um, it, it, additionally, we also offer US history layers and world history layers. But um, can, you, can you speak to the grade appropriateness of the content, Marie? Um, it's really up to whoever's making it. 
because you have so much flexibility with it. You can mark different things. You could add your own text. You could put different images and videos that make it more advanced or more for early elementary. <coughs> so it's really up to the person who's creating it to do that. So tell us about the presentation that you have here. Okay, so this one is good because when you're talking about animals, you have to talk about their habitats. And for this one, um, earlier, the, one of the classes I'm working with right now is working on senses. So when animals sense danger, what do they do? So this is on how animals adapt in the wild. So it starts, and the first one is with the polar bear. And because it's a physical map instead of a political map, you could see the different habitats. So polar bears adapt, as you can see them by them playing around, um, because they have their white coats and they live in the Arctic area, which is white with snow and ice. So then you can go around. So with the herd of the elephants, we can watch the clip of this. Excellent. I think one of the things as we're watching this that I, I've heard other educators tell us is how this really helps um, build visual references uh, for students because they, again, are, it's great for them to read and we can see that there's, there are things here for them to read, but again, it's that, uh, how are they visualizing, you know, the content that's being uh, given to them? Yeah. And also, just like with the Arctic, you could see elephants live in more grassy areas, not the desert. So when people think Africa, they automatically think the Sahara. But if they see this, they can see the Sahara it is more north, and the, the elephants in this clip are in a more savanna region, which is not in the Sahara. So then you could go around. So this, I put this clip in to be more humorous, because you could have, like I said, I'm using it in a class, and you could have the students decide what they want, what animals they want, what adaptation they're going to talk about, what video or image they're going to use. And that um, story just um, ties in with that ownership when students, I mean, to be able to, and I feel like to should jump back from what I had talked about before um, about uh, educators really um, embracing the idea about being a learner first. Um, you don't have to be an expert um, or tech savvy about using Stratologica if you have a willingness and a disposition to say, okay, I'm going to jump on board and I'm going to learn with my students because I feel like that's what I did in Marie's class. And, um, you know, and to say to your students, okay, we're going to learn this together, but why don't you make some of these choices? And that's really powerful because you know, the teacher then is modeling that, you know, learning is a lifelong adventure. How, how are you finding students reacting to this? And, you know, what, what is it that, that really strikes you the most about students' reactions when you teach using this? I think the students react better than my peers because the students nowadays are so used to technology. And as a future educator, I have to adapt with that and make things more technology savvy, more interactive for them to use. So students really react well to it because they can see it, they visualize it as you were saying. They can see the different geography and they can make all those connections, which before if they were just reading or doing a worksheet, they couldn't. Does that answer Mary your question? Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 no, totally, yeah. I totally agree. And I will tell you, I would say in that particular class, um, in Marie's class, um, there we hit the whole range of comfort level. And, um, and for Marie to admit, which is true, that she was nervous about it in the beginning, but how she really got beyond that. And um, I would say in, out of the entire class, it was Marie that, um, made Stratologica have the most meaning for her as a learner and as a future educator. Excellent. Um, we are getting some other questions. Give me a second here just to pull them up. Um, someone is asking, you know, why they see Google Earth and why is this not Google Earth or different than Google Earth? Um, I, I'll take a swing at that and then if you guys want to add anything to it, uh, please do. Um, you know, Stratologica was developed on the Google Earth platform for the desktop. And so when we made the decision to go from just the 2D wall map 
to something in 3D as you hear highlighted by Mary Alice and Marie. Um, as, we've, as we made that decision, we approached the folks at Google about what we were trying to do, and they were very enthusiastic about it because they had never seen anyone use the Google Earth technology to do this. So that's actually the engine that's underneath on the desktop that's powering the globe and, and allowing us to, to build this kind of interactivity. But what we've done is taken those educational layers that are so crucial for helping students of all different ages understand their place in the world, to understand near and far, to understand the abstract, um, to understand how ge geography impacts history, and so on. Um, that's really what we were trying to do with Stratologica. Uh, when we get to the iPad app, um, we're also using that satellite imagery that, so as you drill beyond uh, the layers, and, and Marie, if you don't mind, just pick a major city and um, zoom down and show what it's like to transition uh, transition away. Yeah, any, anything you want to do. So there is sort of the best, to answer the, the question, there's the best of both worlds. Um, we are using Google Earth technology, but then also using their rich satellite imagery uh, to help students understand what's really there. So as Marie zooms in and out, you can see there's sort of this transition to more and more layers or fewer layers and different labeling. And in some cases, we can even see 3D imagery and so forth. So um, it's great. Google Earth is great. It's a great reference tool. We love it. Um, but again, to get the real educational side of things out here and allow students to create, have this easy interface for people um, to use, again, whether they're a teacher or student, that's this, been really great. So you know, if either one of you want to add to that and how this is not like regular Google Earth, uh, feel free. Well, Marie, without, I don't want to badmouth another product <laughs> in this <laughs> webinar, but it's always Let's not do thing. that. Yeah. No, I don't want to do that, but without mentioning the um, tool that you explored the other week, because now Marie's in another course with me right now, and so it is a, um, of a, more of a social media digital citizenship ed tech course, but we're examining tools, and so you examined a map tool, and then I had asked you, you know, tell me what the difference was, what did you see? Will you share without mentioning that name of the tool? Sure. So okay. I was using another tool, and it was, it made, it was simpler, and not that it was easier to use, but it didn't have as many things you can do. So you could pinpoint, but you couldn't do videos. It could only be images, and it just got complicated if you added too much, and there was only political maps. There was no, I think it was actually just road maps, so you had like all the highway lines. So you can see the different geography of regions. So for that, Stratologica is definitely my favorite map app to use and okay. pinpoint things on. Very good. Marie, did you have anything else you want to share with us? No. So Control could go back to you. OK. Um, Mary Alice, you know, can you sort of sum up, before we get into the questions, because we have some more, um, could you sort of sum up what your experience has been again not just with what Marie has done, but in general, how this is sort of transforming. I, I remember one of, one of the things that you said to me is, um, this is how every teacher or future teacher should be taught to teach social studies. And I, and I absolutely love that statement. But could you just tell us again, from your perspective, you know, why you see this as sort of a game changer? Well, it definitely is a game changer because when you think about that, and I, like this methods course that I've been teaching, um, since 2005, I can't guarantee that any of my candidates are going to see social studies in any elementary classroom. And Marie, you know, back that up. Um, so how connected to crime mm -hmm. all by itself that this isn't happening? And so I, I have to tell you, I probably, and uh, how it all happened with Ron, too, I reached out through social media to connect with my personal learning network, uh, my PLN, um, to educators that I knew that weren't having, weren't putting social studies in, you know, a back seat or, or ignoring it altogether. And I started to bring virtual experiences into this methods course and um, so that my students, my teacher candidates, could actually see how powerful it is um, to, to teach social studies at the elementary school level. 
instead of waiting until you're with a content specialist in either middle school or high school. And um, so what Stratologica with that whole virtual connecting with connected educators and really what I feel like Marie is modeling right now is being a connected educator as a teacher candidate, which is really powerful when she goes out to her field experiences as well as when she's looking for her first teaching job. But um, Stratologica, instead of having like what my son said about just we're reading about social studies, this brings social studies to life. And social studies is life. So this interactive, hands-on, authentic way to understand your relationship to the world and location, and it's really powerful. And this is, a, this is such an easy way um, to integrate curiosity, inquiry, wonder, and awe, and then capture that um, at the elementary school level. Excellent. Um, Ryan, you're giving me control back here, and so we're going to get to some of the questions. Let's see if we can get this back in uh, slide presentation mode. OK. All right. Um, just as a reminder, we've gotten a lot of great questions so far. Um, if you still have questions, use the chat feature in the meeting panel. Send it to the organizer. And just before I get to some more of these questions, again, encourage you to follow Herf Jones Nystrom and Stratologica on Twitter. Um, join us on Facebook at Herf Jones Nystrom or visit our website like you see there. Uh, Stratologica.com, you can visit on your desktop for a free trial. Whoops, we sort of jumped ahead there. There we go. Um, join us for a free trial at Stratologica.com. We did talk about the iPad app. We, we're not going to show that today, but if you'd like to try it out, it's actually a free download. Um, and then if you go to Stratologica.com and get um, your own trial login credentials, you can use those for a while with our, our free app and really see uh, what you can do with it. And then it would be great if any of you are headed to ASCD in Los Angeles um, in March. Uh, Herp Jones and Nystrom will be there. We'll have a, a great presence there. We're also proud to sponsor the annual tweet up that takes place there. So I think it's um, a Tiki lounge theme this year. So we're looking forward to, to having everyone join us for that. Um, so let me get into a couple more questions here. Uh, it says here that there was talk about collaboration. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that works? Um, I, I'm happy to, to, to give you a little bit of information and then turn it over to, to Mary Alice and Marie. Um, there's a few different ways that collaboration takes place within Stratologica. Um, First one, it could be sort of the more traditional classroom where Stratologica is on an interactive whiteboard and the educator is having one student or groups of students come up to interact with the product and work with each other um, you know, using the interactive whiteboard. But each student then has their own login so they can create and save and send their own, you know, own content, whether that is a custom view or a presentation. Um, but one of the really great features of the product is that teachers can launch collaborative projects. And we didn't show that today, but it's very simple to, to explain how it works. Um, it, you can almost think of it as a Google Doc in a way. But yet the earth is your canvas, and the student invites, I'm sorry, the teacher invites um, a group of students or the entire class to add their own content to the earth. So they are adding their own content and, and not just the educator can see all of it aggregating in one place, but the students are learning from each other. So um, those are just some of the features. I, you know, I'm not an educator, so obviously you as the educator can think of way more uses for it than I can. But if either one of you wants to talk about the collaborative nature of what this can do for, for you and for your students, please do. Marie, do you want to take it or do you want me to take it? You can take this one. OK. Well. Um, just what John had talked about, um, that it has that opportunity about sharing. It was so easy to um, share your presentations and then include other people for that collaborative part so um, that it's accessible and, you know, you don't even have to be in the same place at the same time to be adding to your presentation, which is really exciting and just adds to, you know, the collaborative learning environment. 
Yeah, that's, that's one of the other things I think that educators have been really surprised about as they've talked to us about the product is, well, what if I'm using iPad? Um, or what if we're sort of in a mixed one-to-one um, -one environment if you're that fortunate? So let's say that there's a mixture of iPads and laptops in the classroom. It really doesn't matter because all this is being served up in the browser through the cloud and also through the native app. So if you're the teacher and you're using this on your laptop and you're pushing out content, it doesn't matter whether or not the student is at a traditional desktop computer, a laptop, or using an iPad, they can still interact with it no matter what platform you're using. Um, another interesting way that we hear that it's being used is that uh, educators are using their iPads then broadcasting um, via using Air Server or Bluetooth or Apple TV. They're broadcasting to another device or another screen so that they can share with students what, you know, what they're working on. Um, Don, can I, can I just jump in that? I, please. I, I, and I'm wondering, this is a question to you as well. So about collaboration, I love to bring in the virtual into um, my classroom. And so I'm going to give a shout out to another unbelievable social studies teacher at the secondary level, Beth Sanders. And she's Miss Sanders, capital T-H-S, on Twitter. She's awesome. We've yeah. done some incredible things collaboratively. Um, not with Stratologica. In fact, I don't even know. It's something I'll have to ask if, if Stratologica is even a part of her school district. But I'm thinking from some of the collaborative projects I have done with my teacher candidates and her um, high school sophomores, if we both had Stratologica, I mean, I'm thinking geography wouldn't even be an issue. We could do a collaborative um, project together. Is that, would that? You, you can collaborate. There's, there's a couple different ways that the, the product allows educators to email content to each other as well so that it shares a link. And if you click on the link, you get a preview of what that content is and you can decide whether or not you want to save that and add it to your gallery of content. So. Um, there are lots of ways to do that. Um, that. That just was a light bulb moment for me about I've done a lot of collaboration, bringing the virtual in to support social studies um, that my teacher candidates might not be seeing um, during their local field experiences. But if that were the case, that would be really exciting to connect my classroom with another classroom. Yeah, there, there's another great space for that. Geography would, well, that's fantastic. There's a, there's a wonderful space for that. There's a Stratologica community that is available to all of our users um, where they can take a look at lessons that are being shared by educators from around the world. So whether you're a user in the United States, in the UK, um, anything that you've created you can share and publish into our community. So that's just another great way to collaborate on content. Um, in terms of time that we have left, just a couple of more questions and we'll get to them now. Um, one, these are a little more technical in nature, so I'll, I'll, I'll grab these. Um, is this compatible with a Mac? Yes. Um, it does work with uh, the Mac operating system. It works with Windows. It works on the iPad. Um, the next question is, does it work on an iPad mini? And the answer is yes. So anytime that we're creating, um, anytime that we're you know, working on new development within Stratologica, we're testing it on multiple operating systems, multiple browsers, um, and as well as the iPad mini and the regular iPad and iPad Air. Um, let's see here. Is there a way to embed questions to measure your students' understanding of the content? That is a great question. The answer is yes. Um, we didn't touch upon that today, but as you saw Marie, um, adding her own content, and you saw the tool set, um, questions can be added right on the canvas of the, you know, with the earth being your canvas. They can be added right there. They can be added in push pins. Um, they can be done, you know, as labels. Uh, there, there are a lot of different ways that educators have done things. They've used some of our numbered symbols to drop on the earth so that students can add, you know, they've taken the labels off of the content layers that we supply and they've put numbered little call-outs throughout and, uh, or numbered symbols and let students add content at the numbered symbols where there might be questions. Um, there's sort of endless possibilities with what they can do. So the answer to that question is yes. So that way they can um, assess what students' understanding is. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? I think we may have hit um, 
all of the questions that, that we've received. I think we've covered some of them are repeats. So, so at this time, what I'd like to do, and let's see if I can get there. If we can advance the next slide, it would be great. Okay. Um, first off is thanking Mary Alice and Marie. That time went by very quickly. Um, thanks so much for being great advocates for the products, but more than that, for everything that you're doing for education. Um, we're thrilled to support you, um, but we, we really appreciate you taking the time uh, to, to share what you're doing and why it's working, and why you, know, you think this is great news to share with other educators. Um, so thanks again so much to both of you. Well, the thanks goes right back to you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for having us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, so to everyone who's listening, again, we recorded this. We'll be sending out an email that gives you some of the resources we've mentioned today, some white papers, um, and probably a link to our blog as well to talk about some of the various different issues that we've covered today. So I remind you again, go ahead to stratalogica.com. Go ahead and get your own free trial. And if you're a user of the iPad, you can go right on out to the App Store and download it. So thanks again so much. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. And have a great rest of the day. Thank you very much.